For the first blood test in 2023, we saw that my biological age, using Dr. Morgan Levine's biological age calculator, PhenoAge, was 33 years, which is 17 years younger than my chronological. Similarly, when using aging.ai, it was 28 years, which is 22 years younger than my chronological. So the obvious question should be, what's contributing to these data? So let's start off by looking at supplements. So in terms of the first two, this, should, this is a standard. I've covered this in earlier videos. I was diagnosed with hypothyroidism in my 20s, so I've been taking levothyroxin every day since then. Secondly, for about eight months out of the year, I supplement with vitamin D, uh, 1,000 IUs per day. Now, there are two new entrants for supplemental intake, and that's the first is glycine. So I supplemented with two grams of glycine per day for 39 of the 42 days that correspond to this blood test. And I also supplemented with a probiotic known as Streptococcus salivarius. And the goal there was to help optimize my oral microbiome. And then for 13 days of the 42 that, for, that correspond to this blood test, I supplemented with this probiotic. But note that there was no dramatic improvement or worsening of biological age data with the addition of glycine and or Streptococcus salivarius for this test. For example, although my biological age for this uh, using Levine's test was 33, that's within the range of around my lowest biological age data that I experienced in 2022. Similarly, uh, for aging.ai, I also had other 28s, uh, three of them in particular for 2022 and a 26. So one could argue that the addition of glycine and or streptococcus salivarius didn't impact my biological age metrics, which then brings us to diet. So what diet composition corresponds to this blood test? So in terms of the period uh, that corresponds to this blood test, it's from December 12th, 2022 through January 22nd, 2023. And more specifically, the importance of uh, December 12th is that was the date for blood test number seven in 2023. So the dietary period starts immediately after the blood test as I'm fasted prior to that until the day before blood test number one, which was January 22nd. So that's a 42 day period that corresponds to test number one in 2023. So here we can see the full dietary breakdown ranked in grams at the top to the, to the lowest, which is uh, 47. Uh, I, I ate 47 different foods uh, with the lowest intake being vanilla beans. Now, the first question would be, why are these foods at the top? Why are these top seven foods at the top? And I, I've covered that in earlier videos. Uh, for those who've missed it, though, uh, I'm going to do a YouTube live stream, my second live stream on this channel, and that'll be tomorrow at 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. So if you're inter interested in that, Come to the channel and check it out. Now, note that we can see on the list glycine, and as I mentioned before, before, I supplemented with two grams per day for 39 days, and we can see that for this 42-day period, I correspondingly averaged 1.9 grams of glycine per day, and that was the intention of lowering homocysteine, and it didn't work. I covered that uh, two videos ago. Now, my diet isn't uh, purposely clean all the time, though. And for this 42-day uh, period, I did have two cheat days. Now, I've, I've noticed that if I go beyond two, uh, or even at two, I start to think about junk food more often. So two is my limit in terms of how many days that I will have less nutritious or quote-unquote junk food. So for the first, this is a standard after the blood test. I'll have some junk. And in this case, it was a chocolate bar. I put peanut butter on top, and then I put grape jelly on top of that. And to be honest, it's like uh, as, almost as good as cheese, cheesecake, if not better. Uh, and then on the second cheat day, I had three slices of Brooklyn pizza. You can see pizza makes the ranking at number 20, and that's in calories, not in grams. So that 24 calories per day is 1,000 calories divided by 42 days. So I had three slices of pizza. Um, so that's that, the two cheat days for that. All right, now this list is ranked in grams. Which foods are top contributors for calories? And that's what we're going to see here, top 10 foods for average daily calorie intake over the 42-day period that corresponds to the first test in 2023. So note that first that this is, uh, this data, these data are from diet tracking with chronometer, and there'll be a discount link for chronometer in the video's description. So if you're interested in that, check it out. So in terms of the number one food, uh, in terms of average calories per day, that's from sardines. You can see I average about 233 calories per day from sardines. And then just going through the list a little bit, um, we can see that nuts and seeds make a prominent uh, entry on this list. Almonds uh, right there. So I include almonds for their vitamin E. As we'll see later, I shoot for a uh, vitamin E goal of about 20 milligrams or more specifically 20 milligrams per day. I include coconut butter because for whatever reason in my data, saturated fat is positively correlated with L uh, HDL. And HDL in 
using my approach uh, tends to be lower than it should with values hovering around 45 milligrams per deciliter. So coconut butter is significantly correlated or actually saturated fat is significantly correlated with higher HDL in my data. So I include some to try to keep my HDL trending towards higher, not relatively lower. We can also see flax seeds. Uh, in my case, um, omega-3 is significantly correlated with lower creatinine as an index of kidney function. So flax seeds are a very concentrated source of omega-3, as are the sardines, but also so are walnuts. So I include walnuts for the omega-3, but also the essential fatty acids, uh, omega-6 more specifically. And then rounding out the list, we see strawberries, which shouldn't be a surprise because they're their number one food in terms of intake in grams, barley and uh, whole, uh, steel-cut oats, and then also beets. All right, so we've seen diet composition. What about macros and micros? How do they correspond to this blood test? So first we'll see that my calorie intake or energy intake, average calorie intake per day was 2194 per day. And that's my lowest average daily calorie intake since I started tracking diet in April of 2015. My previous low was actually the last blood test in 2022 of 2235 calories per day. Now I intend on going lower at some point, but I'm not gonna reduce it uh, below 2194. Uh, until I hit a body weight uh, plateau or a weight loss plateau as I'm trying to get as lean as I physically can. Protein intake that corresponded to this test was about 97 grams per day, and that uh, equates to about 18% of total calories. In terms of total fat, I averaged 82 and a half grams of fat per day, which is about 34% of total calories. And if, if you're interested in how that fat breaks down, including monounsaturated, polyunsaturated, including omega-3 and omega-6, saturated trans fatty acids and cholesterol that's listed there all right what about carbohydrate intake and that's what we can see here so starting from the top total carbs were 304 about 304 grams per day and while that might may seem like a lot note that net carbs equals total carbs minus fiber so for this test average fiber intake was about 86 grams per day so when we subtract that from the total carbs we get a net carbs of about 220 grams per day now, if we multiply that by four calories per gram, we can figure out what percentage of calories come from net carbs uh, for, for this that corresponds to this blood test. So when we do that, we get about 879 calories. And when divided by the average daily calorie intake and multiplied by 100, we can see that my net carb intake was 40% of total calories. Now, in an earlier video, actually the last video uh, in this series that corresponded to blood test number seven's diet, I mentioned that there may be a glitch in chronometer's carb counts. And uh, thanks to some YouTube viewers who posted it in the comments, uh, they noted that uh, fiber is counted as 2.2 calories per gram by chronometer. So when we multiply 2.2 by about 86 grams, and before doing that, note that fiber is fermented, fiber is fermented by gut bacteria into short chain fatty acids, more specifically acetate, propionate, and butyrate. So then we can add those 189 calories from fiber as they're converted into these short chain fats, we can add that to total fat and then we can compute my net macros, which is what we can see here. So when summing up all the fat, including the amount that comes from fiber fermentation, you can see that my total fat intake in uh, percentage of calories is about 42%, net carbs 40%, and protein at about 18%. Now, last but not least on this carbs list are sugars. And I don't track all the sugars in terms of like glucose or lact lactose, but I do track total fructose intake, including fructose, but also sucrose, because half of sucrose is fructose. So when adding those two together, I get a total fructose, an average daily total fructose intake of 57 and a half grams per day. And while that may seem like a lot, that's actually my lowest, that purposefully my lowest fructose intake since starting diet tracking in 2015. My previous low was actually the last blood test, so about 59 grams per day. All right, so we've seen um, the macros and diet composition. What about micronutrients? How does that correspond to this blood test? And that's what we can see here. It may be hard to see, so you may have to go full screen to see it. Uh, and I noted for the last video in this series for test number seven that I do have purposeful vitamin and mineral targets, including uh, B3 or niacin, beta carotene, and vitamin E, but also vitamin K, which I didn't highlight the last time. And that's what we can see here. So starting with niacin and vitamin K, uh, these are specific targets that I aim for every day and kind of craft the diet around these purposeful targets. So in my case, niacin and vitamin K have positive correlative scores with big picture blood biomarkers. So I aim for relatively higher intakes. Now, conversely, uh, beta carotene and vitamin E 
for whatever reason, have net negative correlative scores in my data. So I don't aim for my highest intake, I aim for below that. In the case of beta carotene, that's about 50,000 uh, micrograms per day, or fi which equals 50, mil uh, 50, 50 milligrams of beta carotene per day, which is still a lot, but it's not my highest beta carotene intake as, I, as I'm following the correlations with the blood biomarkers. Similarly, although vitamin E is above the RDA of 15 milligrams per day, for whatever reason in my data, higher vitamin E intakes are significantly correlated with more blood biomarkers going in the wrong direction than right. So I don't aim for my highest intake, but something below that. And then last but not least, we can see the full mineral breakdown. So if you're interested in a specific mineral and what my average intake is, you can see that there. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to live stream on Monday, this Monday, tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you're interested in that, check it out. We can cover which nutrients co uh, correlate with blood biomarkers in my data, which may or may, not, may or may not apply to other people. But I think it's good to show that data. And that's data for more than 40 blood tests since 2015, as I've tracked diet along that, that period too. Also, I, I'd be happy to answer any questions or comments, or you can just ask me anything. So if you're interested in uh, all this stuff, come to the live stream on, uh, tomorrow and uh, we'll do it. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links and merch that you may be interested in, and links for all this will be in the video's description. With discount links for NAD quantification, green tea, epigenetic testing, oral microbiome composition, at-home blood testing, and diet tracking. And note that I'm, I've used or I'm currently using all of these uh, places. So uh, if you're interested in discounts, use them yourself. All of that will be in the video's description. If you'd like to su support the channel, you can do that with the website, Buy Me A Coffee, and that link will also be in the video's description. And last but not least, we've got merch. So uh, again, if you're interested in merch uh, and you want to support the channel and rock the Conquer Aging or, or Die Trying brand, that too will be in, the, be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.